If you want to level up your one-handed backhand, then it really comes down to understanding the fundamentals of the one-handed backhand. And there's really five fundamentals that if you know, can level up your backhand and take it to the next level. So let's get started. If you want to level up your one-handed backhand, then you need to know the five fundamentals that can really take your backhand to the next level. What I mean by next level is being solid, reliable, and having power. So many times I hear the idea of like, well, my one-handed backhand, it's, it, it just gets the ball and I can't hit it that hard. But really the truth is you don't have strong fundamentals. And we're gonna show you how to do that in this video. And the reason why having strong fundamentals is so important is because of this. The better fundamentals you have, the more you can build on top of it, the more power, control, and consistency you can have. So it's really important that you understand each fundamental because I see so many players with elbow injuries because they're trying so hard to do something that they're not supposed to. They don't have the solid fundamentals. So let's get started. Fundamental number one, you have to have the right grip. The grip is so important because it's gonna give you the stability when you're hitting the ball. What I mean by stability, you can feel and resist the ball without having to muscle or do something else with your arm or elbow. This causes a lot of injuries among players. And what do I think is the right grip? Simply holding the racket out and putting your knuckles on top. The reason why this works is you can feel this part of your hand right here and push on it. And this isn't necessarily the bone, but right above it, you can feel how this can resist a lot of force right on your thumb. Now, when you put the racket strings basically behind that, it allows you to resist that while the ball's making contact with your strings. And that's super important. Not only that, it also allows you to adjust your racket face. And the reason why that's important is because your racket face is gonna dictate where the ball's gonna go. That's the number one factor that's gonna dictate where the ball's gonna go. I think a lot of players don't understand that. Meaning that you can get everything wrong in your swing, in your hips, in your body, and whatever else I mentioned here, but if you get the racket face right, the ball can go over the net. So this is why this is so important. Number two, it's your unit turn. The unit turn is how you take the racket back, that initial move. And what happens with that initial move is two things. It rotates your shoulders and not only it steps out with your foot, this prepares you to move in the direction you want to move. Now, if you want to know more about footwork, check out this video because it's going to go over those fundamental keys to moving better on the court, covering more court, getting out there quicker. But now we're going to move by shifting our toe, but also rotating. This rotation of my shoulders creates some separation between my hips and my shoulders, which creates some tension, which really means energy, energy that I can store and use later that can turn it into power. And not only that, it prepares my racket by putting it in this position. Yeah, I turn my shoulders and take the racket back a little bit, but pretty much by doing the unit turn, it prepares my racket. And that's one of the big keys for the one-handed backhand. Compared to a two, if you're late with the swing, you can maybe use your left arm to help out. There's no helping out because there's no left arm. So by preparing as early as possible with your unit turn, it's gonna ensure that you have great timing when the ball's coming, whether it's slow or fast. One other really crucial element of your unit turn is when you're turning and you have the right grip, you'll notice how the strings are facing slightly away from me and that the butt of the racket is slightly facing in front of me this way, not towards me. So a lot of players will do this kind of move where the butt of the racket is facing towards me and the strings are facing forward. That's a no-no, you don't want that. Make sure you have your unit turn where the strings are facing somewhere behind you. Number three, it's time to talk about the racket drop. The racket drop's important because of two things. It gets your racket under the ball, but it also sets your hand up in a leverage position. And what I mean by leverage position is this hammering idea that I talk about a lot. Meaning that, how would you use a hammer? You basically have the hammer head and you have the handle. And what you're doing is you're pulling and driving the head down by pulling. Well, this same concept applies to your one-handed backhand. Obviously, we're not hammering here. We don't want to hit the ball in the net. But if you take it and turn it sideways and pull it, guess what? This is basically like hammering sideways. Now, if we flip our grip and the racket head is below the wrist because it's dropped, now we can pull the handle and drive it through the ball. And this creates a ton of extra power and acceleration. And you'll start to notice how all these things add up to where you're using your entire body to create the power and acceleration and not just one element. So once we get the racket drop, which was simply taking my wrist and turning it down. And one more quick thing about the racket drop that I think really helps a lot of players. What kind of doorknobs do you have at home? The round ones or the handles? If you have handles, get new doorknobs, get the round ones. The reason why is how would you turn a doorknob? So just how we would turn a doorknob is basically how we would drop the racket head below the ball. And this now allows us to use that leverage position and create topspin. 
so you don't have to just kind of get the ball in. You can aggressively swing. Now we're on to number four, that's how we use our body. This is the fuel to creating power. We've already stored it and now it's time to release it. One of the biggest things I think that players struggle with with the one-handed backhand is they're over-rotating. They're actually using too much of their body. The beautiful thing about the one-handed backhand, which is, makes it so versatile, is you don't need to have a full rotation. You need to initiate. You need to have this explosive initiation of your hip turn. And the difference between rotation and initiation is this. Rotation will have you rotating all around. Initiation just fires. It basically has this explosive stop. Then it sends the energy up to your shoulder, to your arm, and then combined with that hammer position, drives the head through the ball. You can see how this could create a ton of power. And it's making sure you time it, obviously correctly. Now with the racket up, it drops, and as it drops, you start initiating that sends the momentum of the racket falling, the coil of the, the separation, and drives your body through the ball. And finally, you have the follow through. As we're driving through the ball, we wanna make contact with a fully extended arm and be pulling up and across to have this nice long follow through where your hands on this side of your body. You'll see different variations. One key about the follow through is making sure that as I'm rotating that I don't open up too much. That what I'm doing is initiating and then as my follow through happens, it's gonna actually continue to pull me open after the ball's left and you don't over rotate. These are the keys to having a great one handed back end. So we put it together with the grip we do a unit turn, we drop the racket, initiate the hip, and then full extended arm at contact and letting it go through. This is how you can build on having a great one-handed backhand that you can use in any situation. Now let's do some action steps to cement some of these things we've learned. We can't work on all of them at once, but really make sure you separate each portion out. One of the most important portions that we're gonna work on right now is the timing. And I think this is probably one of the trickiest things for a lot of one-handed players, is how do I find that nice fluid timing? Number one is you gotta have that unit turn that we talked about. So what we're gonna do is just practice splitting and turning and getting into that unit turn. I want you to also have a ball in your left hand. So get really good at turning and getting into this unit turn. From here, I want you to just position your feet, don't worry about it, and get used to tossing the ball and moving and waiting in this position. So many players feel like they have to see the ball coming and what they're gonna do is they're gonna time the whole thing. And what happens is as they're taking it back, guess what, they don't have any more time. The key is not trying to time the whole thing, but making sure that you get back into your unit turn by the time or slightly before the ball bounces. When you look at slow-mo video and you watch the pros preparing for the shots, they're generally in the unit turn position by the time the ball bounces or even slightly before, depending on how fast they pick up on it. But you do not see what I see a lot of recreational players doing is pretty much sitting here and the ball's bouncing and then after the ball bounces, they're taking the racket back. Recreational players tend to time their take back with the ball bounce. Professional players take the racket back before the ball bounces. So what we're gonna do is do our unit turn, toss it up, wait, 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 and then do all the steps we've worked through, meaning that unit turn, racket drop, initiate the hip, and then finish. I want you to work on the timing of waiting. So I'm turning, wait, wait, wait. Wind took it a little bit. I'm turning, wait, wait, wait. And you'll develop this rhythm. You'll also see me kind of like, as I'm waiting, I'm waiting with my weight, and it kind of goes down and forward. The biggest thing is just to get used to waiting on the ball. So many players are so anxious to swing, they start swinging too early and then they have to slow down. Notice how everything I'm doing here is very fluid. The better you can get it, early unit turn and waiting, the more fluid and free your back end's gonna be. Because again, the power is not coming from all this big windup, it's coming from having that leverage position that we talked about and initiating the hips. So there's no need to try to time the whole thing. Just get used to waiting, initiate, and swing. Waiting, waiting, initiate, and swing. And noticing how the momentum of me relaxing is dropping that racket down into that butt pull position and then pulling the racket forward. In summary, number one, you gotta have the grip. The grip's gonna provide that stability regardless of what ball you're being hit. It's gonna also allow you to adjust that racket face. So it's really important to start there and make sure you have that. If you don't have that, make the adjustment so you can start training yourself to have this new grip. Number two, the unit turn. It's gonna prepare you. That means you're gonna be able to handle all types of balls. Another thing with that unit turn, it's the secret to having a great one-handed backhand return. So many players struggle with the one-handed backhand return because they don't have the unit turn, which allows them to, even if they can't fully rotate their hips, that separation can be used to power when you're in an open stance hitting that return. 
Number three, you gotta drop the racket. If you don't drop the racket, basically it becomes a slice and we don't want that unless you're trying to hit a slice. But we don't want that because we wanna have the ability to create topspin and margin and consistency and reliability. And that racket drop's gonna provide that, which is number four. You gotta use your body the right way. You gotta initiate, not fully rotate. When you initiate very explosively, you can build and create more energy to send through that racket drive, which is number five, your contact. You want that arm fully extended to release all that energy through the ball and then have this nice elongated follow through. That basically means as I speed it up, I'm gonna let my arm relax and flow through. It doesn't have to be muscle. And these are the fundamentals to having a solid and reliable one-handed backhand. If you like this video, make sure you go to totaltennisdomination.org and check out more free, great videos just like this one. And make sure you sign up for our weekly newsletter where I send you tips and things you can do to improve your game that I only send to my subscribers because I want you to get the most out of the knowledge I've gained to improve your game. So if you want to learn how to hit more power in your one-handed backhand, this is the video you need to watch. Because in this video, I'm going to show you how to hit more power using your kinetic chain the right way. So 